Alright, today is Wednesday, February 23rd, and this is a recap for the stock market activities today. Folks, I got a good one for you tonight, and let's start by this. Yesterday, we got the mild sanctions against Russia, and things appeared to reach a climax, and we were anticipating a rebound rally, a relief rally, but what do you know, in the morning, the market opened up gapping higher big time. Yeah, cue the fireworks. We're out of the woods, by the dip, to the moon, baby. Nothing gonna stop us now. Matter of fact, cue the orgasm. Forget about Jay Powell, forget about the Hawk, forget about Putin, forget about Ukraine. Marco Kalanovic says we're gonna go to the moon, by the dip. No problems here whatsoever. And then it all went down to the dumps. Uh-oh. Folks, it was a bloodbath no mercy whatsoever it was a gap and crap sell off all the way till the end of the day and now we're seeing a lot of folks saying you know what the stock market is dead it's over we're not buying the dip ever again it's gone it's gonna go down to zero matter of fact we have the death cross when the 50 days moving average crosses below the 200 days moving average they call it the death cross and here's what happens after that it's a toss-up it could go up it could go down this is voodoo science i don't believe any of this garbage at all but hey if you do pause the screen you can look at it go ahead anyhow the argument for now is the market is oversold not necessarily the indices but individual stocks a matter of fact the indices some of them are getting close to oversold territory so the technicals for now are still favoring a relief rally a bear market rally whatever you want to call it the problem is the fundamentals are not supportive at all we have more escalation in the russia ukraine front and of course most importantly more bad news on the inflation and the federal reserve front so the market is getting a double whammy no mercy whatsoever but rest assured the pumpers are out of the woods even our friend mike wilson who just a couple of days ago came out and said prepare for the polar vortex prepare for fire and ice in the stock market prepare for french fries and onion rings and then he came out yesterday and said the market have already priced in a lot of bad news from the russia ukraine and de-escalation could mean a five percent rally well it turns out we got a five percent rally in the wrong direction because we don't have any de-escalation whatsoever but rest assured we have our friend from morgan stanley perma pumper marco kukovic who came out today and said rest assured don't panic stocks will rise on the end of the thing and more stimulus from china one of these days marco one of these days you're gonna be right and while the pumpers are pumping the kalanovics of the world the tom lees of the world saying buy the dip buy the dip buy the dip the hedgies are actually dumping tech and they're selling the rep for now they're actually sticking with value stocks we're gonna talk about that and a lot more but before we do that here it is in focus tonight how about a revisit to the wall of worry the items in the wall of worry once again dc congress the brothel then we have china russia the thing and most importantly the hawk the hawkish federal reserve let's start with the most active item right now which which is russia ukraine and here are some indicators that are used to assess the risk when it comes to russia ukraine palladium oil wheat the vix and the rsx now if palladium moves higher then the risk from the Russia-Ukraine front is flaring up and therefore we see more rout in equities. Similar story with oil. If oil is popping higher, it means that the Russia-Ukraine tensions are flaring up once again. You know the story. Similar thing with wheat. Wheat goes higher. We have more problems with Russia-Ukraine. But we also have a lot of tailwinds for wheat to move higher absent of Russia-Ukraine. When it comes to the VIX, it's a similar story. If the VIX is popping higher, then we got problems in the Russia-Ukraine front. And that means more downside for equities. And of course, when it comes to the RSX, the Russian ETF, or the Russian ruble, you can use that too. When we see downsides in these two, it means we have more tensions in the Russia-Ukraine front and equities will suffer. So let's see what's going on with 
all of these items. We start with palladium. Here's a two hours chart and as you can see we have a trend line. It appeared yesterday that this trend line is about to be broken. We could catch a relief rally in the equities market because a break of this trend line in palladium it means that perhaps the tensions between Russia and Ukraine is cooling off. We can initiate a relief rally in the stock market. What do you know today? The chart bounced exactly from the trend line and initiated a massive rally higher. The good news for now is that palladium is getting a little overbought in the RSI so we could see a pullback soon. The problem is how can you guarantee anything right now with the tensions pretty much increasing every single day. And here's by the way the daily chart for palladium and as you can see in December of last year there was a formation of a reverse head and shoulder which means the palladium is moving higher and indeed it moved higher. And for now, Palladium formed a bull flag pattern, which is playing out. You can look at it another way. We have a sloping line of resistance. And finally, Palladium broke above that line. So in the long run, whether the tensions between Russia and Ukraine ease or flare up again, Palladium in the long run is moving higher which is bad news for semiconductor and automotive manufacturers. What about wheat? Here's an hourly chart for wheat. Even yesterday, we did not get any signal whatsoever that wheat is going down. If anything, wheat formed a bull flag pattern from an hourly perspective, and today it played out wheat was up big, almost 5% today. The good news once again is that the chart of wheat is getting a little overextended, a little overbought in the RSI, so we could see a pullback soon. Now, the big question is, if the pullback happens will it be due to the technicals alone or will it come hand in hand with easing in the tensions between Russia and Ukraine of course the equities market is looking for the latter scenario and in the long run this is a monthly chart for wheat by the way as you can see we have a saucer bonding formation that goes back for years the resistance is around 950 I believe we're gonna hit that and then wheat will pull back to recharge gather some energy and then it will pop higher again to challenge the highs from 2008. So in the long run, wheat remains bullish. What about another indicator? In this case, crude oil. We will use Brent crude oil. Yesterday, we got a lower high. And the hope was that perhaps crude oil prices will ease and this will recharge the equities market to initiate a relief rally. Because... If the prices of oil move down, be it on technical basis alone, then that is a relief on the inflation front. If it moves down based on the technicals and easing in the tensions between Russia and Ukraine, then this is a double tailwind for the stock market to recharge and initiate the relief rally. Unfortunately, today we're seeing the chart of crude oil making a higher low. And when you look at it another way, what if this is, all in all, a pattern of a bull flag formation? Which means that crude oil will move higher regardless of any pullback. Let's say we have easing in the tensions tomorrow between Russia and Ukraine. Crude oil goes down good news for the equities market. The problem is, if it pops higher again, we're going to face the inflation slash the Federal Reserve front sooner or later. So there is no hope for the stock market here. Two things must be solved in the wall of worry. The Russia-Ukraine front and the Federal Reserve inflation front. We are not even close in solving any of those. What about the VIX? Yesterday, we got a double top at around 32. This was good news for the bulls. And indeed, the VIX gapped down in the morning. But what do you know it caught a bid and it moved higher again be it not making a higher high so the hope for the bulls right now is perhaps the vix will face resistance once again at around 32 and we will have a triple top and then the vix pulls back allowing the equities market to move higher and rebound all hope will go out of the window once the vix starts trading above 32. what about the last one the rsx this was the bull trap from yesterday because as you can see the rsx popped higher Forming a bull flag pattern right after the announcement of sanctions, mild sanctions, by the Biden administration. Today, what do you know, the RSX got whacked right away. And this was the signal early in the morning that we are not going to get the relief ready. We have more signals, by the way, that I spotted early in the morning. We will discuss that in the charts analysis. So where does that leave us in the wall of worry? It doesn't solve anything. It makes more problems for us. 
because the tensions between Russia and Ukraine push inflation higher, higher inflation means that the Fed has no other choice but to become even more hawkish. When we talk about the Russia-Ukraine front, what really rattled the market today, as I said, we gapped higher and everything was looking hunky-dory as we talked about in yesterday's video. We're anticipating a relief rally. In the morning, we were in the process of that relief rally. The problem is we got hit right away with news of a cyber attack a major one against government websites and banks in Ukraine. And this is exclusive to the Maverick Wall Street viewers. We got the identity of this hacker, and here it is. Now you might ask, I'm too slow, I don't know who that is. How about coffee boy Jake Sullivan, who's now a big shot national security advisor? Anyways, when we got the news about the cyber attack and perhaps more advancement by Russian troops, we got another round of sanctions this time a little more serious than yesterday's sanctions. This time around, the Biden administration is actually sanctioning the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. This is not the not certifying the pipeline by the German Chancellor. This is, we're gonna sanction it either way, and this is a step number one to sanctioning all Russian exports, including oil and gas. This will push inflation significantly higher, and again, the market only cares about this conflict, by the way, due to inflation and the Fed's policy. And if that wasn't enough. We later heard that Ukraine is declaring a state of emergency, and this rattled the equities market even further. On top of that, there was an error. Britain announced sanctions against the Russian central bank, and this rattled equities even more. You're not going to sanction a central bank and not cause a crisis. All of these tensions are pushing inflation higher and higher and higher. Today, wheat prices surged to almost the highest levels in nine years. Likewise, we're seeing aluminum prices surging higher and stocks like Alcoa also moving higher. Nickel prices exploding higher, which will be a headwind for EV manufacturers. So be careful here. On top of that, if we have sanctions on exports, specifically natural gas exports from Russia, this one is going to be the crash moment specifically for European equities, because two major economies, Germany and the United Kingdom, will flatten right away. Inflation will surge out of whack right away, causing an insane level of crisis in these two countries, and perhaps more. You might ask, well, perhaps we could find an alternative, another supplier, maybe Norway or Qatar. None of these countries can ramp up supplies right away and compensate for the lack of Russian output to European countries. Not gonna happen. We will see a hit the likes that we have never seen before here, folks. So we're getting in very dangerous territory. And of course, the pumpers, the propagandists out there, they say that the impact from the Russia-Ukraine tensions on the United States economy will be limited. Oh, really? You mean limited like this? Gas prices are soaring to record level in California. I'm seeing six bucks a gallon out there. Soon enough, it's gonna be seven, eight bucks a gallon if indeed we have a war between Russia and Ukraine. Now, the Russians say we're not gonna enter these territories that we deemed Russian already within Ukraine unless these separatists ask us first. I don't take any solace from this at all. I think it's garbage. I think they will enter either way. And this conflict will flare up once again. The problem is we have a conflict between the fundamentals and the technicals. The technicals in the stock market are getting really, really oversold. On the other hand, the fundamentals are not supportive. So what do you do here? You can take a lot of risk, and I discussed that in yesterday's video, or you can just hold the line and wait until we get more clarity. Now, if you already have certain puts or shorts in the market and you've been riding those for a little while, there is no harm to keep them on until you get a reversal signal. On the other hand, opening new puts, opening more shorts right now could be a little risky because all of what this market needs right now is a little piece of good news to start the rebound, bear market rally, relief rally, whatever you want to call it, dead cat bounce doesn't matter to me. The terminologies don't matter to me. Back to the wall of worry. What do we have on the China front? Nothing for now. All eyes on the Russian and Fed fronts. But here it is. We have a Chinese news outlet that accidentally leaked its own censorship instructions on the Russia-Ukraine coverage. I'm waiting for the propaganda instructions to be leaked from CNN in our news outlets. Anyways, the problem with China right now is what if China looks around and says, you know what? It's about time to go ahead and invade Taiwan. That's another shoe that could drop right away. And if that happens, cue the Elmo with the fire. 
cue the nuclear bomb, matter of fact, cue the asteroid, the end of life. What else on the wall of worry? How about the hawk? The hawkish fit? This one is the most important one. Well, I have good news and bad news for you. We start with the bad. Well, BlackRock says that the Russia-Ukraine conflict will put U.S. inflation at 10%, and the Fed might have to live with higher inflation. Hey, geniuses the Fed. We are going to live with higher inflation. And they say that the Federal Reserve's war on inflation is more important for the equities market than Russia-Ukraine. We know that. But Russia-Ukraine pushes inflation higher, which makes the Fed even more hawkish. The Fed needs bigger guns to fight inflation. Bigger guns mean a crash in the equities market and perhaps a shift from stagflation to a recession right away. But rest assured, here comes the good news. The Fed zombies, specifically delusional madwoman daily from the San Francisco Fed. Well, she says that we're not going to see a long and painful correction in the economy just because of inflation. We don't need to be really that aggressive. Inflation is just a fact of life. You know, it's still transitory. Why not just go ahead and say it daily? And she says that she prefers at least four rate hikes. Well, that is a lot better than the nine that JP Morgan was talking about the other day. The problem is, and here's the danger, if the Fed remains so callous about inflation and they hike interest rates by about 25 basis points in March because they're afraid about the Russia-Ukraine conflict, folks, we're going to see inflation surging way beyond 10%. And then at some point, the Fed will wake up and they will have to slam on the brakes we will get into a recession, if not a depression, in this economy. This is the risk. If the Fed is listening, the Russia-Ukraine conflict should not move you away from doing the right thing of tackling this inflation. The longer you wait, the more you kick the can down the road, the riskier and more severe the ramifications will be to this economy. But regardless, the market could, keyword could, find some relief in this. Right now, we're adjusting the interest rate hike for March from over 50 basis points all the way down to 25 basis points. And I do believe, regardless of the market expectations, this is a cowardly Fed, and they are obsessed with the stock market. So they're not going to raise interest rates by 50 basis points either way. They're going to stick to the 25 basis points. I know that. And they will say, let's wait and see and be data dependent. And then inflation will move higher again to 9, 10, 11, 12%. And this is the problem with this Fed. They're already way behind the curve. They remain, to this day, so callous about the inflation problem. If Jerome Powell had any bone in his body, he would have came out and said, you know what? I'm going to do an emergency meeting because we have to stop buying bonds and mortgage-backed securities. That would have been a jolt to the system for the market, but it would have reasserted confidence in the Fed that the Fed is serious about tackling inflation. He didn't even do that, even though ending these purchasing programs, aka tapering, was already priced in. You could have done it with minimum damage. But no, he has to wait till March. Okay, here's the reality in this economy. The CPLI says inflation at 7.5%. Baloney. Durable goods alone at over 18% inflation year over year. Non-durable goods almost at 10% year over year. And these are, by the way, the cooked numbers. But regardless, even services inflation, which remains lagging for now, as I've shared with you in the composite PMI yesterday, this inflation in services is also moving rapidly higher. So again, look at this chart and tell me, how do you see the CPI cooling off. Not going to happen because inflation in durable goods continues to move higher. Inflation in non-durable goods continues to move higher. And oh, by the way, services inflation is surging in a rapid manner now that the Pokemon variant is over. When we look at energy inflation, it is right now at 27% year over year. And this number will continue to move higher and higher and higher. So long as we have the conflict, we combine that with the Fed's recklessness and we have a double tailwind for energy prices to surpass 30% inflation year over year. All of this is crushing the purchasing power of Americans out there. Now ask yourself a question. If the purchasing power of consumers out there is getting crushed because of inflation, who's going to support corporate earnings at this point? Because you need a lot of consumer spending, you need a healthy purchasing power by the consumer to support corporate earnings. And hence, we are looking at peak earnings, with very few exceptions. Very few companies are enjoying the pricing power at this point. You're going to stick in your portfolio within these names. We talk about them all the time in this channel. Now, let's contrast this with corporations, all in all, at least at this point, and the oligarchs. Oh, they're doing better than ever. What inflation? Corporate profits to the moon. The oligarchs' wealth? 
to the moon. Folks, you're looking at a crime scene courtesy of the Federal Reserve, courtesy of criminal Jerome Powell. Now, what about the brothel in DC? Can we find any hope over there? Not really. You have one side blaming inflation on Biden, the Republicans, not even talking about the Fed. And you have another side, the Democrats, who are blaming inflation on price gouging by corporations. Sure, there's a lot of that. But the main reason is the Fed's reckless policy, the cocaine operation. Nobody wants to talk about that, even though it is the main reason of this inflation problem. Senator Bernie Sanders, he rips McDonald's and Starbucks and Amazon for corporate greed as they post huge profits on price hikes. You see what we have here is not due to the cocaine operation. It is due to corporate greeds that are taking advantage of the consumer. And I'm gonna bark about it a little bit and then I'm gonna move on and do nothing about it. Now a glimpse of hope from DC to the stock market could be, and I say could, the fact that the Democrats will be wiped out in November. You can bet on it. Even Mike Bloomberg is saying that right now. The question that we must ask right now is, does the market prefer Democrats or Republicans? Because with Democrats comes the incentive out of whack spending which the market likes by the way the market is a greedy pig it wants more and more and more the problem is the policies of democrats are pushing inflation even higher but would the market like republicans at this point what would they do they're going to cut spending the market does not like that and there is no guarantee here that cutting spending will reduce inflation because inflation always always has been a monetary phenomenon not a fiscal one will the market be excited that Republicans have taken over and perhaps we will pass another round of tax cuts to corporations? Perhaps. But at this point, with $30 trillion in debt and a massive budget deficit, how are you going to convince the public out there that corporations and the rich deserve another tax cut? And if they do that anyways, somebody has to pay the tab. And that somebody will be you and I, the taxpayer, regular folks, not the rich or the corporations. So at this point, does it really matter if we have Democrats or Republicans? I don't think the market gives a rat's ass at this point. Now, what about the thing? Anything we can have here? Well, we have good news, good economic news from the thing that it is going away and we're seeing the return of spending and services, at least from yesterday's composite PMI. But that comes with a caveat and this caveat is higher inflation. So once again, it fires back. Any good economic news means bad news for the stock market because good economic news means higher inflation at this point. Is there any more risk from the thing at this point? Perhaps if we have another variant, courtesy of Bill Gates, of course, if he's cooking another one, we'll see. But for now, the thing is irrelevant. At least it is at the bottom of the list on the wall of worry. Number one, the most active one is the Fed, then Russia, then China, then DC, and then finally the thing. And with that, folks, we're going to move on here and cover the market for you. We start with the performance of indices today, and here we go. The Dow Industrial Average down 464.84 points or a decline of 1.38%. The Nasdaq down big 344.3 points or a decline of 2.57%. The S&P 500 crushed by 79.26 points or a decline of 1.84%. What about the sector's performance today? Leading the pack, capturing the gold, silver and bronze medals, energy. The only sector of the market lining up in the green today. Meanwhile, the laggards led by cyclicals, technology, and industrials. What about the advance to decline ratios? NYSE 23% advancing versus 74% declining. The NASDAQ 21% advancing versus 75% declining. What about futures, commodities? As you can see, crude oil futures were kind of muted today, which was a good sign for market bulls that perhaps we're seeing some softening in the inflation picture and perhaps the russia ukraine front the wti was barely in the green brent gained almost one percent but again the tensions are ramping up by the hour and this will push crude oil prices higher again we gotta find a resolution here likewise we're seeing gasoline up heating oil up natural gas exploding higher gaining over two and a half percent when it comes to softs Lumber down big, almost 6% today. You might celebrate that this is good for the picture when it comes to inflation, but it is actually a bearish sentiment by home builders. They're not buying lumber anymore because what they see in the horizon is a significantly lower demand in the housing market. Prices will crash in the housing market and therefore these home builders are pausing from buying lumber, at least for now. We also saw a down day for OJ, coffee, 
and sugar, which was pretty much in the flat line. On the other hand, we have moderate gains for both cotton and cocoa. What about metals? Muted activities for gold, but silver is breaking out. It is actually catching up with the move from gold. Platinum was higher, but again, the poster boy for this conflict is palladium. Palladium surging higher today, gaining over four and a half percent on the other hand copper was down a little over one percent what about meats down day for both live and feeder cattle futures and look at this the new big tech got slaughtered today down over three and a half percent even the new big tech got hit today what about grains grains perhaps is the only corner in this market that will continue to move higher and it is absolutely alarming when it comes to the picture of food inflation this inflation is becoming dangerous and the conflict between Russia and Ukraine will push grain prices even higher. We will see famines. We will see starvations across the world. And here it is, wheat leading the gains with over 3.5% today, followed by soybean meal, soybeans, corn, canola, soybean oil, oats, all higher today. On the other hand, rough rice pretty much in the flat line. Moving on to the options market, the big casino, muted activities, look at the volume, down big, we're seeing buying of put options, the activities are shifting to puts, abandoning calls, which usually an indicator that perhaps we're bottoming. Not at these times when we have tensions between Russia and Ukraine, and perhaps an imminent war, but on top of that inflation that will push the Fed to become even more hawkish. There is no choice now, and therefore we're seeing more put options buying. Yet Apple came at number one once again, with almost one million contracts traded today about 57 percent of those were calls tesla the souffle number two down big today we saw over 750,000 contracts traded today almost 50 percent of those were calls they're buying more puts right now even though the chart is getting a little oversold so watch out at number three amd with almost half a million contracts traded today even though the name was down big today they continue to buy calls on this name we saw over 67% of the options traded for AMD as calls. What about the unusual activities that took place in the options market today? Not a lot of them. Options market traders are being shy and the reason is you make a move, you get a pie in the face right away. It is a risky business trading options right now, specifically short-term options. But anyhow, we have the ticker BITO BITO for Bitcoin ETF or crypto ETF. They're buying puts here, the 21 puts for the expiration date, April 14th, with expectations that the name could drop down by more than 11% by then. They paid about one buck and 35 cents a piece to enter this trade, all in all spending about $3 million. What about the trade for the ticker EWT, the Taiwanese ETF? This is really alarming when we talk about Russia, Ukraine and a possible invasion of Taiwan. Somebody bought the 55 puts for the expiration date April 14th with expectations that the Taiwanese ETF will drop by more than 14.5% by then. They paid about 65 cents a piece to enter this trade all in all spending about one million dollars what about the trade for the ticker fb facebook again severely oversold but so was paypal and i bought call options with paypal and you know what happened today not good so we're watching these technicals we're playing the technicals the oversold technicals but you have extreme fear going on in the equities market right now they're dumping the baby with the bathwater. water it's somebody is playing these oversold conditions again by buying Facebook calls, in this case, the 210 calls for the expiration date, March 4th. With the expectations, the Facebook could rebound by more than 6% by then. They paid about two bucks a piece to enter this trade, all in all spending about $1.3 million. And lastly, what about the trade for the ticker XRT for the retail ETF? They're buying puts here big time. The 66 puts for the expiration date, March 18th. With the expectations that the name could drop down by more than 10% by then. They paid about one buck and 40 cents a piece to enter this trade, all in all spending about $700,000. Moving on to the heat map analysis. Look at this, a bloodbath across the board. The exception, of course, is energy, Chevron surging higher. But again, at some point, how reliable these names can be. Some of the defense contractors, specifically Lockheed, was up today. Gold was up. Mosaic and fertilizers was up. 
a name that we talked about not so long ago. The ticker TAP, Molson Coors, exploded higher today on the heels of earnings. We have Stellantis, the exception in auto manufacturers. Some of the big pharma names holding up, specifically AbV, the high dividend names. But besides that, it's a bloodbath across the board. I noticed that the big cap are getting hurt right now. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla. Facebook, even NVIDIA getting crushed. Well, we move on to the heat map for the ETFs. Bloodbath across the board, except if we held some inverse indices, the likes of the SQQs, the SPXU, the TZA, the SOXS, the FEZ, the FAS, the inverse index for financials. But besides that, on the energy ETFs, the XOP, XLE popped higher, along with the XME in materials on the heels of gold, of course. When you look at the GLD, GDX, all moving higher. But again, it's a bloodbath across the board. When you look at value versus growth, growth getting hurt the most, but value remains at performing, be it on the downside. And this is not a relief for those who are holding value, because okay, you're down not as much as growth, but you're down. It doesn't make a difference anyways. So where do we hide here? When we look at international markets, the majority are down. The Brazilian ETF, barely in the green, the EWZ. So where do you hide right now? For now, energy is working, and I see gold working if the fear continues. But even gold is getting a little overbought in the technicals, which makes making a move right now in this market really really risky one way or the other let's move on to charts and we start with the 30 minutes chart with spy the s&p 500 what do we have here the chart gapped up higher in the morning so far so good to the point where it recaptured the line in the sand 430 as support but what do you know after that it has been a flush down with no mercy at all we closed all the way down at the lows of the day at around the last support 422 now, if this was, let's say, a year ago when the retail mania was alive, you will see retail traders buying the dip at 420 just because of the cool factor. Perhaps not right now, but when you look at the RSI, we're getting in oversold territory. We could go a little lower. What the bulls want to see here this is the best case scenario for the bulls, is a gap down, a massive one in the morning, and then we see a recovery, a pickup of the dip, and we close at the highs of the day. But again, on what fundamental news would that happen, absent of a pullback of Russian troops, when they say, okay, we're not going to invade anymore? Are you seeing this in the news right now? We're seeing the opposite. What about the daily chart for the continuous contract for the SPY's futures? This is the last hope for the bulls. Either the double bottom is going to work, or we will see a pump higher, or it's going to be a massive flush down from here. Because we're not going to see solid, reliable support anywhere close to here. It's way down there. It's going to be a painful ride if we don't bounce by tomorrow. Obviously, the candlestick pattern, the action that we got today favors the bears. The momentum indicators are curling down again, which favors the bears. But look at the volume. It was a little below yesterday's volume. So are we seeing the selling drying out? Or perhaps we could see a technical rebound, a short selling rebound. This is what the bulls are hoping for. But this hope is diminishing by the minute right now. Moving on, the cues. The triple Q's 30 minutes chart. Look at this. Absolute massacre. We saw a move higher, a gap higher in the morning. Almost a retest to the line in the sand at around 343, but that failed right away and it has been a painful ride since then. A mini baby bounce at around the last support that you see in the chart, 334. And by the way, I tweeted this. If the support of 334.15 is broken we will see intensifying of the selling this is exactly what we saw and we closed the day below that number we're getting slightly oversold in the RSI so the hope for the bulls right now is a massive gap down in the morning then buying of the dip and closing at the highs of the day that would that would amount as a reversal signal for the market but right now the bears are in full control. They crushed whatever hope the bulls got today. And by the way, when you ask where is the next support, let's move on to the daily chart for the Qs this time around, not the continuous contract. Let's apply the Fibonacci levels. And as you can see, the support is way down there at around 316, 317. So this could be a painful journey, absent for rebound by tomorrow. Moving on to the daily chart for the continuous contract for the NASDAQ. Once again, we breach the support 
of 13,600. Bad news for the Bulls, good news for the Bears. We're looking down at 13,300 as support. Look at the momentum indicators. They're now in negative divergence and accelerating to the downside. Bad news for the Bulls, good news for the Bears. Perhaps the only hope for the Bulls right now is the volume. The volume cooled down a little bit. You combine that with the fact that the VIX did not pop higher by a lot, we could be at selling exhaustion, but we'll see. With all what's going on in the fundamentals and the news, Russia, Ukraine, it becomes really, really risky to bet on it. Let's zoom out to a weekly chart for the continuous contract from the NASDAQ. We'll erase all of these markings and levels all together. Here's a trend line. The trend line was already broken. This trend line goes all the way back to September of 2020. We have broken the trend line. Ominous signal for the bulls you could play with the line if you have some bullish bias you could draw it this way even if it is this way we're not going to visit the line again and catch that rebound unless we go down about three and a half to four percent what about a chart a 30 minutes chart for the iwm the russell 2000 and this is how i figured out that the relief rally is not going to happen today look at the sloping line of resistance that i drew yesterday today in the morning the iwm popped higher and it retested that line and it failed right away that was an ominous signal that it's not going to happen and then the confirmation came out once the support of 196 six and a half was broken we're now looking down at 191 and a half either we catch support from there or it's game over for the iwm we will see another flush down and there is no support near 191 and a half we have to go down way below what about the dixie the dollar index it popped slightly higher today recapturing 96 of support and the reason is look at the russian ruble yesterday the hope was that the ruble is going to rebound from the support and this will push the dollar down today the ruble failed that support line and hence the dollar moved higher now the ruble is getting a little oversold here everything is getting a little oversold and hence the battle between the technicals and the fundamentals what about gold gold popped higher again it is getting once again overbought but we're not seeing a pullback matter of fact gold is moving higher and now eyeing 1920 so once again you're seeing the battle between technicals and fundamentals the technicals are overbought in gold hence meriting a pullback but we're not seeing a pullback because the fundamentals are pushing this chart higher what about the 10-year yield it recaptured 1.94 as support once again and now it becomes really challenging to call whether this chart is going to move higher or lower because on one hand you have the russia ukraine tensions escalating once again and that was pushing this chart down from the get-go on the other hand the escalation will push inflation even higher which means that the fed will have to be even more hawkish hence meriting this chart to move even higher above two percent once again we'll see what happens but the technicals per se for now are good for the 10-year yield because it recaptured 1.94 as support what about the tlt weekly chart all the gains were erased today for the tlt and it looks that we're going down to retest the support of 134 and a half absent of a crash in the 10-year yield now we got to find a fundamental reason behind why the 10-year yield is going to move down what about the vix for hours chart we already talked about this chart in the beginning of this video but the macd accelerated higher today indicating that perhaps the pop in the vix is not over yet perhaps it wants to retest 33 as resistance once again and higher vix means lower equities market the chart was a little favorable to the bulls yesterday all of that hope was erased today what about the vxn for hours chart once again look at the route that we got in the market today yet both the vix and the vxn did not pop higher by a lot the explanation for now could be that we're seeing selling by the algos and the institutions but we're not seeing a lot of hedging a lot of the hedging was already done and hence the vix is not moving higher but when you look at the macd indicator from four hours perspective it is accelerating to the upside the arrow size also moving higher which means that perhaps the vxn wants to test at around 40 to 45 within that zone as resistance before it pulls back once again what about apple a daily chart this was the concerning element for any hope for a rebound rally the reason is it closed on a down day on higher volume with both momentum indicators curling down and on top of that it failed to recapture the upper edge of the channel the upper range of the channel in yellow as support and today it ran a retest to that line and got rejected big time again 
As Apple goes, so will the market. This is not a good sign for the market right now. We have to identify support because the next support I have is around 150. That is way down there. So what about 157 as support for now? The resistance remains the upper line of the channel. What about Tesla, the souffle, an hourly chart? I did close my puts yesterday, yet the chart went down big today. I might have closed my puts a little early here, but look at where the RSI is trading. It is becoming way oversold. Hence, once again, the battle between the technicals and the fundamentals. All what this chart needs is a little spark, an ignition of sorts. Any good news when it comes to the Russia-Ukraine front? Unfortunately, we're not seeing any of that right now, so we could see the pain accelerating. If you want to jump right in right now, to buy puts, you gotta be really careful because any spark will blast the chart higher. So if you're gonna buy puts, make sure that you book your profits right away because you're a little too late to the party here. And by the way, we got more bad news for Tesla. Tesla got fined $275,000 from the EPA over air pollution violations of all things. Or oh, the irony. Oh, we got some news regarding Reverend Elon Musk, who emailed CNBC today and said that he's happy the Justice Department is cracking against short sellers. How about the Justice Department cracks against this fraud, this con man, who initiated Doge and Shiba and other scams that cost a lot of retail investors millions, if not billions of dollars. But hey, we have some good news about the Rev. He got a new Mrs. Musk. Look at her. Maybe half his age. The Rev likes them young. And another creepy element, every time a chick dumps him, he kind of clones a younger virgin of the same woman. For example, look at this one. Isn't this another virgin of Grimes? They look the same to me. Similar story. Here's uh, Mrs. Musk number one. And here's uh, Mrs. Musk number two. He cloned a younger version of the first one. But we should all be thankful that Reverend Elon dodged a massive bullet. Because had he stayed with this train wreck, the stock might be trading right now at around hundreds. So he dodged a massive bullet, perhaps the best financial decision Elon Musk ever made. Anyways, what about Tulips BTC? It erased pretty much... The majority of the gains from yesterday, not a good look here, a reversal candle of sorts. We now have to look down at 35,750 for support. If that fails, run for the hills. We're going down to 30,000. By the way, all of this route in the tulip market, it doesn't really matter for the crypto billionaires and the crypto pumpers. The likes of Novogratz, for example. The reason is they bought way down there. They're still holding profits. But the majority of mom and pop's investors, that's a different story. The majority are holding the bag. Speaking of uh, holding the bag, here is AMC Apes. The hope is still here on oversold bases on the RSI, but for now the market cares less about technicals and it is fixated on the Russia-Ukraine front and the fundamentals. If we dip down below 15 and a half, all the way to 14, the last line, it's over, it's not going to happen. The chart better rebound by tomorrow. And lastly, moving on to the conclusion of this video. What do we have on the economic calendar tomorrow? And by the way, I apologize, I presented this in yesterday's video, but it is actually for tomorrow. For Thursday, February 24th. Today, we did not have anything on the economic calendar. So tomorrow, we have the initial jobless claims, a revision for GDP, and lastly, new home sales. And with that, folks, I'm done here. This is all I got for you for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you again tomorrow.